мною принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. Russia invading Ukraine has been the only thing on the news for the past week, and rightfully so. This invasion could have serious consequences. Global leaders have chimed in, the United Nations is involved, we could be on the brink of World War III, and I feel terrible. I work a 9 to 5 and it feels wrong just going to work when the entire world could go to war at any second. I want to do something to prevent this but I don't know what I can do. But maybe there are people who do know. I live near one of the top colleges in the nation. Surely there are students there who can help me figure out what I can do to prevent World War III, right? Oh God, I don't think I'm in the position to, to help with that. Like, I don't think I know enough to speak on that. I don't know, like, I'm not super educated on that. I generally don't know, and I don't really know all like the details. I don't know, I don't know too much about politics. I don't want to say too much. Okay, we have a problem here. Turns out, people don't like talking about politics because they don't know enough about politics. I don't blame them. I'd be hard pressed to find a college student or anyone to be honest who knows everything about what's going on in Ukraine right now. But let me introduce you to a man named Thomas Mann, no pun intended. Mann was an author who lived through both World War I and World War II. That shaped his worldview so much so that in one of his books he makes this statement. Everything is politics. I think what he meant by this is that everything you do, including avoiding political statements, is in itself a political act. I know these students don't know everything, but I still want them to be part of the conversation because hopefully through that conversation we all learn and grow together. No one knows everything, but like this guy, we all know something. It's a cash 22, right? If you ignore it and it just keeps happening, then like eventually you're gonna need to deal with it eventually. But like if you send in troops right now, like we're gonna get drafted, Russia's gonna retaliate. The safest way to probably award World War III is just to do what we're already doing, crippling Russia's economic system. That's been America's response for the most part. You beat the bully by taking away the stick he's gonna beat you with. But the problem is, what if when you take away the stick, he's still six foot five, 250 pounds, and still got fists to fight with? I think what we're doing now isn't working. Sanctions are not enough, because they're just gonna keep encroaching, encroaching, that's what the Nazis did. What this man's referring to is a thing called appeasement that happened in World War II. Right before World War II started, leaders from Germany, the United Kingdom, France, and Italy met in Munich and allowed a man named Adolf Hitler to annex part of Czechoslovakia in the promise that he wouldn't take more land. We all know how that story ends. That's why some believe that we need to send some, some troops. Because if history repeats itself and America has no response or a weak response to Russia, the fear is that stuff like concentration camps would happen. Not, not, not concentration camps exactly, exactly but Something to that effect. This is the cause of so much debate as to how America should respond. On one hand, you don't want to escalate things. On the other hand, if you don't escalate things, it might get worse. It's hard, right? Like if you were the president of the United States, what would you do? I don't want to be president. I would resign. Honestly, I might do that too. The thing is though, I'm not the president. So all of these answers aren't really getting me any closer to an answer to my question. What can I do to help make this situation better? When I started asking that question, the resounding answer I got was, I can't help, you know, personally. Individually, there's nothing like can physically do. It would have to be like the leaders doing something, and I don't think we would be able to change their mind, because they clearly have a different goal than like, the peace. Putin seems to be very insistent on doing this. He's not listening to any of the protests. I don't know what else we could do. This sucks, but they're right to a certain extent. I feel so powerless and small here. I can't personally tell Putin to stop, and even if I could, I doubt he would listen. But there's gotta be something I can do to help, right? But like, I guess, yeah, spreading awareness is like the most you can do, like through social, social media and stuff. Social media. Now that's a double-edged sword. On one side, I feel like this generation has kind of like made this a meme. Like, I like, see a lot of TikToks about like, Daddy Putin, don't do this. 
But on the other hand, I get all the very like, this is what's going on right now. These are all the people being affected. And it's so real and terrifying to see all the comparisons to like previous wars. And some might argue that this side of social media isn't all that helpful either. Everybody should know about social media. Everybody's worrying what other people are doing instead of like, worry about yourself. I feel like posting all the time bad images and like what's happened. It's just like you see all of this stuff and it's going to your brain and you just like think of it all the time instead of just worry about what's going on with you because literally you cannot control anything. She has a point. What's the point of all this awareness if I don't do anything with my knowledge? But also, I have friends who don't use social media and don't keep up to date with these things and they're clueless as to what's going on and don't even know there's a problem at hand. And aren't they more happy if they don't know what's going on? Now this is where I have to disagree. This is the red pill, blue pill situation. Would you rather know everything and suffer for it or not know anything and be happy in your ignorance? Of course you can be happy without certain knowledge, but that doesn't mean the rest of the world is happy as well. Ignorance does not change the truth. Now don't hate on the lady just because you disagree with her though. I'm sure she meant well, and I think what she was trying to say was do your own research away from social media. But disclaimer, if that's what you choose to do, I hope you know what that knowledge will do to you. Once you stop ignoring the pain, you'll feel wrong going to your 9 to 5 while people are dying. You'll want to do something, but also feel so dang powerless. You'll be tempted to view this as a numbers game. It's like the whole like analogy about like if you're on a train and there's like one person Yeah, you say one person like, to say one the person to all the people, it's kind of like that as a leader. But don't fall for that temptation. Every digit in the casualty count represents a real person with a real name who impacted real people. These are lives that are being played with. And I hope we remember that in all of this, whether this ends tomorrow or years from now. Real people are dying, and real people will continue to die until it's over. Remember that the next time you think of war. And maybe if enough of us remember that, there will be no more wars.